we'll be working with the hand in the arm series, page number 95, step number 36. So, clients usually laying comfortably, savasana. We're gonna take our pinky and ring finger and interlace between the middle finger and the next finger so that we're able to support the hand, uh, like so. Um, this is so that we can do hand points and I'll also have to address the send line. So acupressure points like on the feet, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So finding like underneath that first ball of the hand, midline, and then the heel of the hand. And when you flip the uh, hand over, we're at 10 and 11 between like the thumb and the pinky finger and the next fingers, kind of opening up to the sides. We've got hand lines that start at the wrist and just draw out over the fingers, kind of like the feet, and we'll have a neat little hand stretch. There's only one major energy line through the arm, yet we have a couple branches in the forearm. I'll show you those in a moment. So I'll continue on with the weaving of my fingers here. And whether or not um, you need more or less pressure, some clients here, you can do your little thumb circles coming in. And this is bilateral. So um, if you needed more pressure, excuse me, coming down between your legs and then leaning into rocking forward and sometimes even coming up and giving a full spread open of the hand is very nice. So a few different ways of being depending on how much pressure you need for that so top and the bottom doesn't need a lot or I'm sorry 10 and 11 doesn't need a lot of pressure then I'm going to just roll through the back of the hand there I'm sorry I believe that these should probably be the hand stretch first so oh thumb circle the back of the hand I was right so checking in making sure I have things in order and well enough <laughs> So thumb circles over thumb and pinky, coming back up, and it's like the foot. The top of the skin of, uh, of the hand, is, like the top of the foot, is more delicate. So I'm running over those lines, but trying to get between the bones as much as possible. Okay, so um, there's an interesting little palm stretch that we can do um, by running our thumbs from the base of our client's hand over their the tips of their fingers and thumb, and then taking the next two doing the same, and the middle finger. However, it's an interesting little process where I'm leaning forward with my thumbs down and my hands cover most of their hand to support, so that as I lean back, I can just allow my thumbs to roll and draw out over, but the back there doesn't move. We don't wanna be dragging the skin on the back of the hand, it doesn't feel as good. So those are pretty static. If your hands are super small, you might have to like walk step your hands up as you do that if the person's hand is really big. So as uh, you become more familiar with that and a little bit more comfortable, it'll become a little bit more sweeping of emotion. Um, you can stop short in the palm of the hand, it feels really good, and then open up into the fingers and then all the way out the fingertips as you get more comfortable with that as well. So that was stretch the palm and the fingers. 39, pull each finger, crack knuckles, it's kind of the same thing. We massage the tops and bottoms and the sides, circle the finger and maybe just give it a little pull there to stimulate reflexology, reflexively, sinuses, the ears, various, um, yeah, really it's the upper respiratory, hey, give me your arm. So you gotta like make sure that your clients aren't trying to help you too. So it should be as relaxed as possible throughout the course of all of this. And so there I've got all of the fingers. So brain, sorry, brain, sinuses, ears, nose through the little action of doing that at the end. So sticking with tradition and the routine here, we're going to stretch, palm press, and thumb press the outer arm. But like the foot, sometimes it might feel good to give a little rotation before we go ahead and settle into something like that, giving a stretch. So shake the arm out, make sure that it's placed well next to the body we're going to face the arm so that we can give the arm an ABCBA. 
pattern, stretch, palm press, work the energy line, palm, stretch like we did the leg. So outside and then to the inside. So we have one energy line on the outside of the arm and it's going to run from the back of the wrist straight through the radius and the ulna up towards the elbow. So I'm on the epicondyles coming through some tissue there like our brachioradialis. And then we're coming around to work up the edge of the tricep that works right up into the back of the shoulder attachment points where deltoid, tricep, and I shoot your teres muscles all come together. Feels really good back there to get up that high and then you bring it on back down. We'll thumb that line, okay? The inside line, just to state, and I'll keep working on it later, is then going to divide the inner arm right in half. So between the ulnus and the radius, and you feel the inner osseous membrane between the two. And you come up to the inner elbow epicondyle, working your way up through, you see the bicep. So, and you stay in front of it, on top of it, you'll feel the very soft area where the veins, the arteries and the nerves all run. Brachial plexus comes out of the armpit. So we're staying up on top of it where you're like on the deltoid and the shoulder working up towards the pec minor and pec muscle, subclavian. Feels really nice to get all the way up there because these energy lines will come through. So all the way out and down. Now I did say there's going to be some additional branches. The forearms work a lot, our flexors. So there are these two outer lines that we'll be working when we get to the inside as well. So. All right, our ABCBA pattern. I'm going to cup the wrist, hands, fingers are flat, and then I um, stretch the arm bones and out over the hand. Here, we're going to take the heel of our hand and cup into and over that acromion process, the shoulder bone, a little bit into the pec minor, and out at a diagonal uh, over the deltoid muscle. We're gonna stretch that way, so butterfly stretch. We allow them to take a couple breaths. We're gonna start having some kitty assists as we did earlier today. I'm in another diamond stance and I'm palming up the client's arm, bringing it back down. You can see I have to turn to the side. And the arms, they're so much smaller, it's gonna take us a lot less time to go through this here. So I am thumb pressing my way up towards the elbow epicondyle. I'm bringing it back towards the tricep. And I see some people stay like this, but you can also turn into your fingers. And I'm using my fingers here, but I'm supporting the front side of the arm just so that I can give a little bit more pressure. I also am using my uh, self elbow to knee to, um, for a lever so that I can use my bicep to lift for that kind of pressure. Uh, and then take my core out. Because if I'm not leaning into myself, I have to use a lot more core in my back to make this happen. So I like to take the easy way out and support myself at times because we have a lot of work to do. So bringing it back down, around, and all the way out. Palming. and that stretch. Usually when I'm into the uh, ABCBA, that stretch, I'm transitioning myself to be more organically in place for the next pose. So as you become more familiar with how things are moving, you'll be able to do the same. So also paying attention to where I'm at is a very important thing um, for the whole of your practice. So. We already went over the lines and I can kind of just draw and see where I'm supposed to go. Maybe those two outer lines. But then we're going to stretch. So the shoulder is the same, wrist the same. And we're just gonna lean in, a little bit back and forth. Stretch and open that up, palm it out. Okay. And whether or not I take C-shaped little hands here to the outside edges of these energy lines of the forearm, you can feel along the ulna edge and the radial edge there, pinching on yourself that 
there is a so coming to the inside of the arm or facing the arm here your diamond stance we'll be able to stretch palm and do that interior line that we're talking about in the outer two branches like I said so cupping the wrist heel and hand protecting with an additional pillow I'm going to place the heel of my hand just into the pec the pec minor and then coming up maybe tabletop for myself we give a stretch for a couple of breaths and then we come down for palming all the way up you're gonna be a little bit more gentle to the interior of the bicep the forearm can accept quite a bit of weight a lot of times uh, but be delicate to start so c-shape hands i can stay right here kind of walk my way up the edges of that the forearm up over the elbow the olecranon or i'm sorry the epicondyles and then we're going to work our way back down so again that's something that you can feel on yourself the edges of your radius your ulna and then to the interior line again it's going through the interosseous membrane between the bones up over the elbow to the bicep and gently in front of the veins, the nerves, and the arteries. And I came up to the acromion process where the pec minor, pec major come across with the deltoid and I'm gonna work my way back down. Gently through the interior of the elbow there, it's a little sensitive. So palming my way out, up into the arm, bringing it back down. We'll stretch that out. So now with that outside inside energy lines, we have we will be skipping 42 opening the wind gate, which is also at this time we could just include a palming to cleanse out the tissues if we like, a sweeping motion, but we get into rotations. Sitting to the side here. Uh, you can see the arm elbow is just between my legs a little bit. I'm going to be holding on to the wrist fingers, maybe the fingers, excuse me. If we interlace fingers, I can lift and create a decompression of the wrist while holding on to the forearm there. And that feels good, a little bit of a massage. We can come in, let go, and hold the hand. Same thing. I'm going to come in, uh, same thing, meaning we keep moving up and coming in to create leverage on our own leg and thigh with our elbow so that I can rotate the arm as well as scoot up a little bit more. I can get behind the shoulder blade and rotate the whole of the shoulder and shake it out a little bit and get behind the shoulder blade and that feels really good. I kind of use my fingers to press in a bit. So after all of that rotating and shaking, this is going on <laughs> we are going to pull and stretch the arm here so coming down low heel of hand with the breath just kind of stretch and away from the ear the head can pull to the side but we don't want to drag our clients away so coming up I can give a little stretch as I come up into place placing my knee at their side body like their ribs and leaning out to the side or lunging out to the side, we can go ahead and stretch out to the side. This way, they don't get yanked off the mat if they're smaller than this. If they're a lot taller, you can stand up and create that pull as well. If they're really heavy, you might not even have to hold them in order to pull them. But this is a nice place if you have to lunge from here up overhead to stretch. In the book, they actually just show I'm on my knees here, or you could turn around if you have the space to give somebody a little tug. Now there is a medial arm pull. This is the first time we're kind of coming this close to our client, meaning across their body. So we want to stay up in our lunge. Their hand goes to our knee, and as we lunge across their body, it lifts their shoulder. So we can lunge and kind of press that shoulder back, pull and press. We can massage the traps. We can massage behind the shoulder, medial arm pull. And then this is just a little bit of a comfort stretch, crossing the arm to shoulder into the chest. 
and at a diagonal. Coming back down, we're gonna go for a tricep stretch where this palm is open, comes up overhead. And this stretch we want to go um, point of comfort. So if your client isn't that flexible and their hand can't reach around, maybe you start out here, bending, bending the arm, bringing, bringing, bringing it up, warming it up until maybe, 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 after you've done all that hard work, you can start to get them around for more stretch. So as they become more flexible, this elbow can sink down further, but from here to here, we don't wanna just drop the elbow to the ground. You'll see in some of the photos that people stretch from here. We're going to stretch and start the stretch here, very small, which means I'm going to come here. I'm gonna hold on at the base of the arm at the shoulder blade where the serratus meets the body. So from here to here, I'm gonna just stretch the uh, elbow a little bit. It barely moves, but there's definitely a deep internal stretch. Now, every stretch that I make, I move my hand just a little bit further down onto the ribs, and the elbow seems to move a lot further. But that's so you venture through the journey and the stretch rather than just dropping into it. It's like the hip, if you drop into the stretch, you can't really come back. So you go slow, slow, slow into the so you kind of max it out. And then ultimately some people get all the way back there. But after that, we take the arm out to the side in a cactus and we palm it out. So I have come to hear that I'm taking too much time and talking quite a lot. So this is a good point in time where you're going to pause the video and practice the other arm in sequence and then when you come back we're going to do the abdominal series so setting this arm down into a comfortable place you simply walk over to the other side in order to start taking care of that other arm so good luck and now Willing to continue, same video. I'm going to finish up steps one through 60 in the abdominal series. So um, we want to straighten our client out a little bit. All right, and make sure we haven't pulled them off the mat. We're gonna be lunging across our client. There's no reason to be on both of our knees and sitting that close. We wanna take a conservative stance always. Abdominal massage isn't something that um, everybody is accustomed to or ready for. Uh, in this practice, we're just doing general techniques that lead to the idea of deeper work. It is very important, the abdomen, as it cleanses, detoxifies. It's also the central point of where everything in our body truly connects. So um, very important to take care of this area. But as new practitioners, new clients, a lot of times we opt for lightness or staying out of this area until we get more comfortable with it. So please try it amongst yourselves, however, um, trade so you know how it feels because it does end up feeling good. So our step number 51 says finger press underneath the clavicles. We don't wanna just come in and start dropping our hands in. We wanna to touch on their shoulders, let them know we're coming in, maybe give a couple palm presses across that tissue, and then having felt the tension or if they're willing to accept that pressure, we can use our fingers to define underneath that clavicle. And it's just about five little circles from the outer edges to the middle sternum area and back. Pretty general but, and they're pretty natural, okay? That leads into finger circling the rib cage. So we want to bring the energy and the circulation of the body to the front. And we're holding on well enough that we're not tickling our clients and we're trying to find spaces between the ribs. But as I do these little circles, I'm bringing them forward and around that rib cage to the front side, where I'll try not to laugh. You know, and that happens a lot. So 
one nice sweep. This is always a section you can come back to again. Thumb press and finger press the intercostal spaces. That means that we're coming up uh, next to the sternum here. So if we are comfortable with our clients, our clients are comfortable with us, we can use our thumbs and if we have the space, if the breast tissue isn't too much, we can come up to the sides of the sternum. The sternum, of course, attaching all the ribs in the front is about an inch, inch and a half wide and comes all the way up. So whether we come in with fingers, thumbs, or palm circling or pressing on the sternum could be an alternate. So I'm going to place my hand on the sternum here, right hand circles, maybe to her left. And that gets the pec tissue on that side. If I change hands, I can go the other way. Granted, if you don't have the best rapport with the person, you discuss, maybe I can press on your sternum, or if things are sensitive, you can use a pillow as a protector. So whether it's a bolster, bolsters are nice because they're round, but I folded this pillow in half, and now I can circle in both ways. And it's a nice compressive hug, kind of like that last cross arm stretch I showed you. So there are all options. Not everything needs to be done every time, but it's possible. Another one is hands together like this. And the client could actually put their hand there as well and we can press. So That all leads to palm circling the expanse of the abdomen coming all the way down and around. So I'm coming all the way around from the ribs to the hip bone below the navel, not onto the pubic bone, to the hip bone and back over to the ribs. So it's not just, you know, above the pant line, but we do have some abdomen below the pant line there and it does come off the ribs and off the hip bone. So warming everything up. We're going to palm press on the abdomen, step number 56. We look at the belly with its eight points in a circle. The right hip iliopsoas area, um, sorry, the iliocecal valve is down in there with the digestion. We follow the ascending traverse and descending colon to process everything out. So one is at the hip bone, two is at the side abdomen waist, obliques, three is at the ribs, Four, at the sternum, we want to be careful, zygoid process, tiny little bone, no fast movements, people are afraid of breakage. So come down, but it's just the top. And then over to the ribs, another point, side waist, number six, seven at the hip, eight would be then right down in the bottom. This is the colon and would be the exit. So I'm going to switch my stance so that I have this palm press available, heel of hand to fingertips. If your hand's too big, you might tuck your fingers into a tiger palm. So from that point one, I kind of sink into the abdominal tissue through to the belly button. So number two, side waist, sinking into the heel of my hand to my knuckles again. Finding that rib space, I come off the ribs down into the belly, across into the navel. It's number four. Careful about that xiphoid to the middle, switching my knees, and I'm finding number five at the ribs there, using my other hand to access. Um, this is point five at the side waist, number six, um, that was six, that's seven at the hip, and eight, coming straight up and through. So there's also, you know, you can use your knuckles as well, coming through, whatever's comfortable. There's also two more pictures. So that was the large intestine. Um, the smaller intestine uh, kind of churns in this kind of way, coming up the abs and around the belly, up and around, up and around. And then there's also something called nalikriya, which would be pressing slowly from side to side. So any of these techniques could very well be opted for or out, depending. So to churn the belly, we want to lift up and come around. 
So whether or not that's maybe separate little fists, gently working our way around, kind of like kneading dough and churning a belly, or we use our hands to make that churn kind of happen. Uh, Manali Kriya, with the breath, taking a big deep breath, and exhale, we press down on one side. We allow the breath to inhale, fill up that other side, and then exhale, we'll sink and let go of the other hand. Not too much, we don't wanna be pounding on our clients, but I'm just exaggerating the lift so that you can kind of see. You wanna gently be pressing the abs um, alternately, that actually, of course, we're massaging the organs and then slowly and gently pressing them from side to side in the body. Number 57 is thumb pressing around the navel. So we find the belly button. And those eight points, we basically bring them down into a square instead of the expanded circle. So belly button, we've got um, one set of points on both sides of the belly button that we just kind of press into, feel the abs, feel if you feel the pulse, you just kind of back out. You've gone deep enough. Twos are right on top of and below the belly button. Same thing, just press enough to press in, feel, and come out. Three and three are the bottom two corners. Four and four would be the upper two corners. So again, just enough to kind of feel the pulse and come on out. And so just a little bit of that Nali Krila to move it around, maybe a circle. In the book, 58, it says finger press the psoas. So we're not massage therapists. This is for general practice. Um, massage therapists, you can add as you may, uh, proper technique. But this is just uh, headed towards the psoas. So on one side of the body, we take our fingers and we're going to come to the hip bone. And all we're going to do is just slowly like do a little diving in motion, kind of pressing the tissues off the hip bone and away. So we want to find the hip bone, the abs, and kind of press into the abs and get them to soften away from the hip bone. So we're following the iliac crest around, which ultimately will lead to the psoas. But this isn't psoas work like massage therapists know it to be done. So this is just, you know, an intro to heading there. So both sides. If the belly is super, super tight and you can't get around it, then maybe we have them bend their leg or legs. And from there, maybe the belly is a little softer for us so we can find that hip bone and soften our way into the waist, getting the obliques up and away from the uh, lower hip because everything really our sitting and driving pulls our hips and down, pulls the chest down, pulls at the neck. So the more that we can get those tissues up, the better up we can stand. So this leads us to our fancy number 59, our back lift, which depending on size, you're going to have already determined whether or not you're going to try this fully with your client. Um, the back lift can be as simple as coming in, I'm standing on top of my client. My hands are going to go behind her back and just lift the tissue. So just coming in, rocking my way into the low back and not lifting her body up off the ground, just giving a lift. Because there is a much more advanced version of this pose where we go in, we connect our fingers, we actually lift this person up and then settle back down onto our own legs, knees, forearms, so that we can try to support them up there into like a full back bend. Inhale, exhale, yep, and there's up. So I should have asked her to remove the pillow. I didn't know if I'd get her up, but then we're gonna set them down. The last thing is shake the hips to relax and pressing them out, coming down to make sure that everything's in line and ready for our large yoga poses and sequences. So thank you so much for that. We're going to take a few minutes to adjust and continue on.